Welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, where we aim to give swimming the coverage and publicity it deserves. Every week, we celebrate the sport we love with amazing special guests and topics from around the swimming pool. And now, here are your hosts, Scott and Dan. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Propulsion Swimming Podcast. I'm your host, Scott, and with me again is my good friend, Dan. How are you doing, Dan? Yeah, very good. How's things with you? Yeah, busy. We're getting our final few videos edited before Tokyo now. It's um, mm. a little bit snowed under with work at the same time, but it's all going to be worth it, definitely. Big, big build up, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Now, I know on our last podcast, we said that it might be our last one before we kind of start previewing Tokyo as a whole. However, something rather interesting happened over on our social media accounts at the beginning of this week. Dan, you decided to put up a poll asking whether swimming was a team or individual sport. I did. It was very much a spur of the moment topic to bring up and talk about. Um, I've always thought that swimming is a team sport and I've talked about it with well, we've talked about it with swimmers, haven't we? The GB swimmers, and we've heard about it a lot. And it's a very close knit and cohesive team right now. And I asked the swimmers that I coach whether swimming is a team sport or an individual sport. Now I personally say that it's a team sport, but the mm. majority of swimmers I asked answered individual. So I wanted to get everyone else's feelings on it. And now we have a poll result from Instagram. Yeah, so it it is a tough question to answer. I understand that. You can look at it in many different ways when you consider the swimming as a sport from all of its different angles. But the most interesting thing we took away from the poll was the way that everyone voted. Now, Mm. luckily enough on Instagram, we can see who voted for which side. Now, we're not going to throw any names under the bus, but the thing that was or the thing that stood out the most to us was that practically everyone voted for individual, which I completely understand. I follow the logic. It's your times, your sport. However, there were a small majority of votes for swimming being a team sport. And the most fascinating thing I found about this was that almost every single person who voted for team is going to the Olympics as part of Team GB. So in our eyes, this felt like a massive teachable moment for those age group swimmers who listen to the podcast, who follow us on social media. We thought we'd, we jump into it on this podcast. And not only did we think it was necessary to discuss this, but a prominent member of team GB reached out to us and asked if he could help out as well. Now, this is where our guest for this week comes in. So welcome to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast, Mr. James Wilby. How are you doing, James? I'm very good, thanks. How are you guys? Yeah, we're good. good. We're good. So I, I got to kick things off, kind of jumping straight into it. We obviously know which way you voted in the poll, which <laughs> overall turned, it, overall, I think it finished 70 to 30 for individuals. Now, which way did you vote and kind of why did, why did you come to that decision? I am... Um... I'm, I admit, well, team straight away was the first thing I voted for. But it's mm. one of those ones where normally I'm just, you know, can be flicking through Instagram every now and then, see a poll, and I'm like, oh, that's an interesting poll. But as soon as I saw that one, it was just a case of I'm really curious to know what the general like swing is so far. And also, mm. I really strongly feel about team. Um, and so, yeah, vote for team. And then when I saw the results, I was, yeah, pretty surprised. And hence the little discussion that we had. And, um, yeah, now we're here, just going to talk about it and hopefully get some uh, explainers out to some people to uh, make it a little bit clearer. What's your thoughts on it being 70% individual? It's, it's not surprising, uh, to be totally honest. Um, and it, it is something that kind of is very easy for people maybe to believe that they see one person um, in a lane on TV, you know, okay, one person, then another, then another, another in a relay, but the relays is maybe as close as it gets to a team. Um, and, you know, the reality of the matter is it's it's often a lot more of a team sport. Um, but yeah, it's very easy, you know, when you're looking at the TV to just see the one and it's like they're winning that medal for themselves and, you know, they put the work in, that's them. And it's it, it's without the explainer, it's difficult maybe to see the, the full picture. Mm. Now, I guess you you can take any sport which is technically individual and you can say there's a coach behind the scenes, there's Mm -hmm. physios, there's 
nutritionists, and that makes it up a team of an individual sport. But in my eyes, swimming is slightly different to that because unlike, say, running, you are very rarely training by yourself. You're training as part of a team. And as someone who's going to the Olympics, how important is that team training aspect to pushing your performance forward? It's it's really corny, I suppose. But the, the gist of it is, is I would not be here today in my swimming career without the team that has been around me, you know, for the recent, you know, recent history, last couple of years. And then also the, the teams of people, the groups of people that have kind of my, my, my team in inverted commas has evolved. And, um, you know, I would not be here today without them. Um, and like I say, very corny to say, but it's, it's very true. Um, and so hence why with that kind of hindsight and looking back it's something that i feel quite strongly about so Mm. yeah so scott was talking about the physios and nutritionists and stuff like that but who else is involved in a swimmer's team so let's um let's let's go broad picture then so basically the way i would look at my team and i always say my team kind of in inverted commas i'm aware that the uh, the audience can't necessarily see my fingers because I'm just <laughs> on an audio podcast but um yeah when I say my team I'm talking about the people that I, I'm working with and um, and obviously in in my position that's you know in the British Swimming's National Centre in Loughborough um, and so it's a team of staff and of people that kind of are often shared amongst um, other athletes but um but yeah so there's myself firstly and then my kind of my primary next uh, almost partner in crime as such would be my coach. He's, he's the one who's almost looped into practically every other conversation, whether it involves swimming coaching or not. Um, and so Dave is my coach, Dave Hemmings, uh, as you may know. Um, and yeah, we've worked pretty closely together now for uh, quite a few years. I moved into basically his group at the very end of 2016, December of 2016 or so. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've worked together ever since. Um, and then like kind of expanding it out in terms of let's stick on sort of staff we've got um oh <laughs> i always always think about going in with names but then it's like i know i'll not i'll forget someone or and i'll, just, I'll make a fool of myself so <laughs> just, I'm back. Board, just, just yeah. in case ever they they come back to me and be like i'm part of your team i'm like i know you are i'm sorry I've such an <laughs> but um, no so we'll have like um strength and conditioning and physio nutrition sports and um, science like analysis team and then we'll have sports physiology um and uh psychology um and that's probably the core the pillars of the the team that the, the office that we have we have an office mm. there's a british swimming office at the pool and they're the kind of the core people that are often in there um and and they kind of generally fall all in like um kind of under the general a lot of them fall under the general term like sports science sports medicine um, mm. and it is that broad team of people everyone having their own specialty and everyone bringing something to the table like without doubt without doubt like whenever we're looking forward across the cycle or going into competition everyone's bringing something to the table that's really valuable um and um yeah they also all form a really key part of like my daily weekly training um and then if you were to kind of zoom out a little bit more when we talk staff, maybe you've got some of the people that are in like the British swimming offices. And so um, there's a, a an incident that you may remember back in 2018 at the Europeans, we had a, a timing malfunction in the, the final of the 100 meters breaststroke. And it mm. basically meant that all of our times appeared uh, a tenth faster than they actually were. And um, I kind of remember quite clearly having an interview and it was, discuss it they were like kind of trying to ask me about it and what I thought and all this sort of stuff and it was 100 and I still had other events to go and I just kind of immediately thought it's like well we've got people who are like sounds a bit bad but they're paid to deal with this they're here to deal with this sort of thing they're uh, they are senior members they're part of the organization of British swimming really Mm. quite senior people in British swimming they're here to deal with these sort of things that's not my job and as a result I don't need to worry about it whereas in a fantasy world when you know those senior members of British swimming weren't present on our team at those sort of competitions those are sort of things that you might have to deal with you know there's the classic at galas it's like kind of representative from such and such club please come to uh, yeah i'm mm. from yorkshire so sheffield the amiga suite and it's like if you don't have those people with you at a competition you kind of have to deal with a lot of that sort of stuff yourself so um, you know, looking forward to Olympic Games as well. There's a lot of stuff, particularly, you know, COVID related and, and holding a safe game. So, so they form a really important role so that we can focus on swimming and they focus on all the organization 
um, of the broader picture and, you know, simple things like the transport and to and from the airport, all these sorts of things. Um, and then probably covered the majority of the staff, but then it mm. goes into the, the more detailed, uh, the more details of my team as such, which is the people I work with day in, day out and the athletes, pe- peers, you know, fellow, ath- fellow athletes who are striving to achieve, you know, amazing things themselves on their own little journey. But at the same time, our journeys are, are, are somewhat interconnected and it's 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 a really nice atmosphere when you have on a training in a training environment or on a team when we go abroad a group of people who all want to achieve themselves but at the same time know that you know we are all greater than the sum of our own individual ambitions and we can achieve more there's that you know the the classic i think business sort of phrase is synergy i think it is and it's where you know as a group we all function better when we really work together as a team. And even though we're in swimming individual races, it's like before the races, you know, really cheering and really getting each other pumped for going around. And then when we come back, it's like, you know, clapping and really kind of just getting the buzz of how someone else has performed. And so that's me talking for a good number of minutes there, but it's like, it is so broad and so mm. like, so large, such a large group of people. And, and that just is, is shown when you look at like the teams that would go away to these competitions, there's a you know good number of staff there and a good number of athletes. And when it's one person going around for a race, there's a lot of people making noise. And when someone's mm. coming back with some metal, there's a lot of people making noise and really feel like they've been a part of it. And really, you know, everyone feels just really good about it and it really helps us through the days. So mm. um, yeah, <laughs> there's the broad overview, the long broad overview. I mean, I mean, I'm fascinated. Aren't you, Dan? Yeah. Oh, I was. Yeah. I don't know how long that was in the end. The time disappeared. But I was, I'm sorry. <laughs> I get a bit carried away. I know. I no, know. no, no. Please, please it's... go ahead. Um, to me, is is it a case of these age groupers who didn't who voted individual? Have they not quite been exposed yet to that level of staffing? Maybe if they're at a smaller club, or maybe if they are at a bigger club where you have all these representatives, these coaches, maybe they're just not quite appreciative of the stress that they would be under if they weren't around i think it's something that you gain uh, as you as you kind of progress um with your career it's something that you kind of gain a realization of i think um if we if we if we think back if i think back sorry to when i was say an age group and mm. i was young and i wasn't entirely sure where my student career was going i you know i kind of would like to make the most of it um but my team again versus commas back then did consist of i had my coach and I had to say like a team manager, if we were a club going away to a competition, you might like be there to kind of help organize the bits and pieces. But then like, it's again, really corny, but there's like your parents as well mm. as your peers mm, and yeah. all these people, maybe it's like a little team and it's always again, team, you know, like team ish sort of. And it's like, these people all form parts of your progression in the swimming world and on your swimming journey. Um, and obviously it becomes like a lot more significant when I'm, you know, <laughs> trying to trying to name list and name all these people that are important. Like a couple of minutes ago, like it becomes a lot more important and a lot more significant when it gets to an international level and a senior level. But it is something that's kind of always there and always present. And, and you know, you mentioned right near the start about how there are some other sports which are maybe more so individual even if they have some of the staff that I've mentioned, um, and, you know, to an extent there's like, there's a bit of a team there as well, but swimming is just really important because with the, the old, oh, you know, an average Joe may ask a swimmer, how do you do swimming? You're swimming up and down for hours on end, looking at a black line. And mm-hmm. it's like, when you've got that group of people around you who are supporting you and it applies to a club, that's really important to keep you doing that, blind swimming up and down on the <laughs> black line like just aim endlessly because mm. you know you got to have fun and it's something that I've, I've said um kind of recently when i did an interview with swim england was the most important part of when you're younger is enjoying it because mm. i'm i'm old in the swimming world <laughs> i'm getting old i'm 27 i almost I, I think i'm 27 yeah i'm 27 i just kind of got to the point where this the, hopefully there won't be anyone listening who's thinking you don't know what's coming yet but um no, probably. <laughs> i'm I, i'm getting on in the swimming sense and if i wasn't enjoying it now then mm. i wouldn't still be doing it and if i wasn't enjoying it 10 years ago there'd be no chance i'd be doing it right now because i would have mm. kind of lost interest lost the love of the sport and i wouldn't have felt that ability to push myself um 
And yeah, that, that's something that you have to get from age group swimming with that quote unquote team or of, of peers and parents and coaches around you. Well, you spoke right at the very beginning that when you watch swimming on telly, you just see the individual in the lane. So I'm kind of wondering whether, because obviously YouTube is a big platform right now, should swimmers utilize social media more so that everyone can see what goes on behind the scenes? Or does that then disrupt training and the routine too much? Um, I, I, uh, there will be some people, um, you know, there's people in my sphere, as I should, might say, my training group, my friend group who know that I'm quite like into my videography and stuff like that. And, and you know, kind of trying to create a bit of content. And I've always shied away from it. And I always mm-hmm. really like, I'm going to do that. And then I don't. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll be able to do it or someone will maybe do it as well. But like, it is something that, yeah, I think we could probably could do a better job at showing. Um, but then again, it's like, it's, it, look how long I've talked for. I just, I'm talking for England almost about my team because it's just mm. so big and so detailed. And it's like, you know, could be a long Instagram story, let's put it that way. Yeah, but it's, yeah. You know, it's something that the, the true, you know, swimming fans may be really interested to know because it is very detailed and very sort of, very interesting. It changes on a day, uh, a yearly basis. So mm-hmm. I'd say an example of a swimmer who's really nailed that is Adam. Now I know or Adam PT, if, if people don't know him by his first name. People should, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it, I'm not even talking about, his social media actions or his YouTube. It's, it's the way that we associate him with Mel in no way do we associate Adam's success by himself. And whether that's because Mel's got that sort of personality that she's happy with him putting her out there, maybe, maybe it's that case, but in, in no way do you ever feel like his success is individual. So maybe it is just the way that swimmers go about post post swim interviews, the way they talk about their coaches it's kind of an interesting one. Yeah, it is. Um, I think Mel's, um, you know, she's, she's a great coach. She's, she's, she's really, you know, done an amazing job with Adam. There's mm. no being around that bush. And, uh, you know, she's, she's also had a great swim career of her own. Um, and, uh, you know, she's been kind of recognized for that. Thankfully, uh, her, her swimming career and her coaching career recently. Um, and so, yeah, it, it would be quite nice to kind of have that element. I think you get like bits of it here and there, um, hear about other coaches but you know there's there's obviously Dave my Dave Dave Hemmings and then there's mm. you know Dave McNulty uh, down at Bath and um, and and Steve Tig uh, Tiggy <laughs> up mm. in Sterling and, and these are coaches who who have done amazing things so Duncan with Tiggy and and um, and Nutty Dave McNulty with with a number of athletes um, mm. including so back at the previous Olympic game Siobhan and, and Jazz um, yeah. medalist right there so it is something that you know you hear a bit of of other coaches but it would be good to have kind of these coaches getting a little bit more screen time and air time and um yeah i think who knows i mean dave my dave dave hemmings is uh certainly ramping up his efforts on uh twitter and instagram to kind of like yeah. interact with their people so uh yeah yeah go give him a follow we if you have not already <laughs> oh yeah yeah we see him we send everyone in his direction the stuff yeah. he's putting out mm. is awesome why don't we touch upon the Dave Hemming squad slightly then? So mm-hmm. what makes your training group so successful as a team? Because you're all absolutely killing it right now. Mm. Um, I, I think it's, a, 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 well, I sound very egotistical, but like it's a very talented, because obviously I'm amongst that group, but it's a very talented <laughs> bunch of, of athletes. I'll, I'll speak yeah. for the other the other guys um and uh just uh, some of it some of it might apply to me but um no they're, they're a very <laughs> talented group of swimmers uh, and they're, they're extremely hard working as well um, mm. and that's pretty much the two things that you kind of need you need um a good um bit of talent and also just that drive and, and hard working isn't necessarily physical as well it, it's a lot of things it's like the whole you know living your life almost 24 hours a day as someone who's trying to achieve for that one minute in the pool. Um, mm. And, you know, they really, they really subscribe to that. Um, and it's, it's great being amongst that group. And there's an element as well. Like I'm there looking across, I'm like, I really have to maintain my place in this group because it's, it's a group, which I'm sure there's a lot of athletes that would love to be a part of. And there's a lot mm. of swimmers who would love to be able to move into, 
you know, well, a national centre national centre squad at all. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's really kind of that really keeps us going and kind of stay pushing each other on and be like, I want to achieve what they're achieving and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, it, it is a really, a really, really special group. And um, I'm, I'm very aware of that on a daily basis. Is there anything you guys kind of do, whether it's in the pool or out of the pool to kind of almost bond your mentality into one as a group? Like you said, you've got these characteristics. Is there anything you guys have done to form these, whether it's when a new swimmer comes into the squad or kind of socials or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, COVID dependent. I mean, that's kind of been yeah, a bit of a, yeah. a spanner in the works over the last um, year and a half. But I think this, you know, this group's been going for longer than that, so I can speak to uh, the before times um, and hopefully the soon times. But um, yeah, the, the socials are really important to us. We... You know, we try to even if it's on a, like an individual basis or like so like a what like two of us one on one almost or mm. like you know a couple of us or just like the full group. We try to keep you know at the end of the day we're spending so much time with each other. We've got to get along with one another type thing, mm. um, and and that's something that is is very key. And um, so we do try and have times when we're just like, do you know what? Let's go out for a meal, or do you know what? Let's go grab a coffee, or such yeah. and such. Um, but um, yeah, I think it's something we're all just we all just want to get along. We all just want to have a good time and, and really enjoy our journey and that time that we're in the sport. Um, you know, you mentioned like new people coming in. It's mm. it's just a case of we want people when we, you know when we have someone new join the group, we want them to fit in, and you know we'll try and make that effort with them. And quite often, the people that you know the, the new people that I can think of that have come in, you know, in the past year or so have just immediately kind of fit in and, and really brought life and energy and really contributed to the group. And, and that just makes things so much more easier. And it's when you've got a lot of that high energy and, and, and um, just desire to work together well, um, it really kind of creates that great group. I don't actually know. Maybe it's something I need to think about, but like the true details of what mm. it is that's kind of made us all like this or whether we've just got incredibly lucky, where there's, you know, uh, how many are in the squad now? Uh, a good number, around 10, give or take. Yeah. And like, there's the 10 of us who just really get on well and it's a really enjoyable environment on a daily basis. So, um, yeah, it is, it's, it's nice. You've spoken a lot about the team and the different staff roles and stuff. I don't want to put you on a sp- spot too much, but which part of that team is the most important would you say it's the swimmers you swim with or is it the coaches or i'm <laughs> like gonna put it on the spot actually. you've set here <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, slightly. Um, yeah no they're all they, they're but they you know genuinely they are all equally important um mm. there isn't um you know there isn't of the kind of the groups that's kind of that's cluster we've got the athletes the the coach so dave let's go with and then you know the sports science support group if you kind of cluster them up there's, there's not one of those that i don't interact with every single day mm. Mm. um and i think that's kind of the really important takeaway and, and you know there's also the the element of if, if some of that was taken away from me or what you know it would it, it would be challenging definitely there's, there's some things i just can't do on my own or, or the others can't make up um and yeah, kind of Olympic year as well. Like some people, yeah. people move jobs. This is a job for them. And there's always that worry for me. I'm like, oh, we've got some really crazy good staff. And if they were to get picked up by another sport, yeah. I'd be, I'd be, I'd be a bit worried. Like, and, and, you know, they are really like gold mines in the sporting mm-hmm. world. Some of these staff are really knowledgeable and, and they all play in a really important role but um yeah i, I don't want to lose any of them and i don't want to pick a favorite <laughs> because that is a very slippery slope uh, <laughs> to go mm. to go down i i kind of think the analogy if any kind of young age group swimmers are, are struggling to comprehend how important a team is is we we spoke about it during the manchester meets especially is try racing and setting a pb by yourself when you're in a pool by yourself it's incredibly hard. There are no there are no world records in the swimming record books where they aren't in a race. So you find that incredibly hard to race on yourself and it's proven it's it's not good. It's not good for your times. So now imagine doing all of the background stuff up to that race, the training, the coaching, your team around you. Imagine doing that by yourself 
And that's why it's not an individual sport in, in my eyes. That's how I'd explain it to someone who, who's struggling to comprehend it. Hmm. I think that is probably a great way. That is, a, that is probably a really good way of looking at it. It's not, it's not honestly not a way I've looked at it myself hmm. before, but um, it is very accurate. Actually, we've done stand-ups and you know, time trials and simulations in training. It's just not the same as a race. No. Um, but the, the analogy of, yeah, that's setting up that personal best in an empty pool um is a pretty good one and it is it is exactly like that um it took well give or take exactly like that it's a very good analogy actually i quite like that one mm. i mean some of the most successful swims always come from people swimming for something bigger than themselves i mean relays are a pretty good example of that but surely mm. you'd rather want to be part of a team than going about it solo yeah um it's being able to enjoy an experience with someone else is i mean it's, it's just you know we're social creatures we like doing things with yeah. other people and yeah. if you're gonna be chasing performances and chasing goals and yeah do it with someone else or do mm-hmm. it with the team preferably the more people um you know that you really get along well with and really you know, kind of you thrive off one another the better okay so we we've talked a lot about what makes a team and why swimming is a team sport so so why don't we kind of move on and touch upon a little bit about team gb and the atmosphere mm-hmm. right now because we we've spoken to plenty of guests since europeans and all of them have said it's by far the best atmosphere in a team they have ever been in w- would you reiterate that um yeah definitely 100 percent. i mean <laughs> the my my uh history my um experiences so far like they're not necessarily as vast as, as some of the other athletes I um, have made, you know, a good number of international teams, but only kind of in, in, in recent years. So that's like the past three, four years. Um, and we had um, an absolutely incredible, the, uh, well, I don't know whether anyone's ever mentioned this before, but um, Team England Commonwealth Games in 2018 was one of the, no, one of the most amazing teams I've ever been a part of. Um, and one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. And I always kind of look back on that and there's part of me that's like, you know, it's never going to be that good again. Like that was just incredible, you know, on the Gold Coast um, such a great team, all this sort of stuff. But what we kind of got to the point now, particularly when we focus specifically on the atmosphere, I'm, I'm sure the, the Gold Coast will still hold its top spot when it comes to just locations for a, a few <laughs> more years. But um, when it comes to the team that we've got, it is one of those teams where I'm kind of looking at it and we're, you know, we fly, um, not, not, we're pretty close to flying basically. Um, yeah. actually, I actually believe the day this potentially goes out, give or take, yeah, anyway, I think so, yeah. um, we will be flying, but I'm you know, kind of looking ahead and I'm like, when we get together as a group, it is going to be a group of people who are just so like, I was going to say so well bonded and kind of get on so well. And, 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 the, and yeah, I kind of, I'm going to stand by that. Like that's what I mean. And, and that's not to say everyone is, you know, happy days and, you know, let's all hold hands and sing and do dances and all sorts of stuff. Like there is obviously a, like any team, any friendship, it's like it requires constant work and constant input from one, both sides. But it is a group of people who, when it comes, when push comes to shove and it comes to, day one and day two and, and and these days of real intense pressure absolutely everyone on that team i can probably say for certain will be there for absolutely every other member if needed um and that's something special that doesn't come around every time uh, every competition you can go to competitions and it's like you get and it feels great you get like a 90 percent maybe buy-in but when it's that 100 percent or you know that's a perceived 100 percent because you know i'm sure there'll be there may be a cynic listening and being like oh it's not going to be <laughs> quite perfect <laughs> when it's that practically perceived 100 percent, and it's like i feel like i could almost approach anyone and they would be there for me when it comes to you know aiding me in my performances just like i would be there for them that's kind of a nice feeling um, and it's that, that reassurance and it's like it's almost like a bit of a family away from home and it's just comfortable it makes mm. things we're going through a very, you know, important stage of our careers and it makes things just that little bit better. And, and, and that's, you know, can be really important and makes the difference when it comes to the actual final outcome and the results. 
Well, I was going to say, it must bring about better performances by feeding off everyone's energy. I mean, we've spoken to a lot of people about at uh, Europeans, especially Anna. Anna was saying that, that everyone mm. was cheering after every race, whether it was good or bad. They would always console if it was a bad race or cheer if it was a good race. But the, the, the energy that must create within the team, it must, it must be such an amazing feeling. Yeah, and, and Europeans is a great example. Like the the medal hall from Europeans was crazy, mm. and there's you know there's no doubt in my mind that individually everyone was absolutely on it. But there's no doubt in my mind that that kind of medal hall was definitely jacked up for an, a percentage that we're not going to know. But like I'd buy an amount on, I like I want to be part of this team. Like I want to be part, like really part of this team, mm. and to be really up there with everyone else and you know that's going to push someone on that last little bit um and you know uh, a <laughs> classic saying from from another athlete you know a happy swimmer is a fast swimmer and mm. if you're happy and you're really comfortable in this group of people that you're with it's going to elevate your performance um and it really makes a difference to these internationals and and europeans as as i'm sure anna said europeans is a great example of that and hopefully a bit of a like you know a draft run effects would be for tokyo and hopefully it'll be even better there yeah here's a, a, a quite a tough question so feel feel free yeah. to kind of skip over it if needs be Dodge it. <laughs> do you think it's the success that breeds the atmosphere or the atmosphere that's bred the success that british swimming has had right now that british swimming has had right now so in, in terms the of last... the the last year because Okay. The time the time is coming out of the pool in terms of British swimming. And we've said before when we did the the preview of the Olympic trials, the, mm-hmm. the qualification standards were ridiculously fast. They mm-hmm. were like top five, top ten times in the world to get onto that team. So mm-hmm. to get a squad of I think 30, might even be 32 if you count the open water guys as well. To get a team of 32 to go, which is a lot bigger than Rio shows success to me so would you say that that success has driven the atmosphere or the atmosphere around camp has driven that success i I guess Mm. they are intertwined yeah i I was gonna say it might be a bit of a cop out saying chicken egg like (laughs) i I do i do think it's a um it is it is a really interesting one to kind of sit back and think about i think if we go almost slightly further back the the philosophy at british swimming um albeit in some respects maybe slightly controversial um in it or has been at times the philosophy that british swimming uh, has had uh, over the last um few years cycles quads um has been to kind of drive the the the, the team on and and uh, broadly speaking to drive the team on and achieve a a season's best performance effectively at the major meet which is in the Mm. summer so world championships european championships olympic games Mm. um and it has taken some time to get to a point where we're at now where it has almost seeped through the entire team and the full stack of athletes in that you know that's not to say that the athletes weren't attempting to do their best previously um but it's it's kind of got to the point now where everyone knows almost what's expected of them or 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 what they've been working towards i'm I'm very carefully very very careful about (laughs) how i say this but because i know how i think it in my mind but sometimes when the words come out i might um might come across like wrong but like they the 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 intention and the plan the game plan the broad game plan is known by everyone and when you see so Rio, for example, was an extremely successful, I think, mm. correct me if I'm wrong, but an extremely successful Olympic Games for uh, the swim team and GB as a whole generally. And that success has kind of started or almost started or continued because it obviously started before Rio, but like kept that ball rolling. And it is a bit of a snowball effect in that it's got bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, I really started to feel it in 2018 and mm. then again in 2019 and obviously we've had a bit of a a blur whatever's just happened in the last year i don't know mm. just mad crazy year and we've got to 2021 and the olympic games and it's just 
the whole team is absolutely steamrolling and mm. the success has fed into an atmosphere which has then fed into more success and that's fed into more of an atmosphere and like we've talked about with the europeans that if that's the draft run for the games i ugh, bold claim bold statements but like i do genuinely believe that this olympic games can be really something quite special for the swim mm. team like i really do think that we will come out of this and be like wow that mm. is a special sort of run that you know british swimming as a whole has had and it has been incredibly you know impressive mm. and from a performance standpoint individual performance standpoint but when you actually dive into it and look deeper it's that whole team atmosphere which has really drived that success because you know it's like we've talked about for for, for all this time now it is a team event mm. and a, yeah. a team sport sorry a team sport mm. um, <laughs> and it is really important to the whole the whole thing What's interesting you said you sort of got the momentum from 2018 and 2019 and I I've kind of like kind of connected a few dots and that's when ISL was starting to come about and I'm just kind of wondering is it because of that that the performances because it's not just the GB swimmers that you get the Aust- the Australians are swimming really well the the Americans are swimming well is it because the ISL the formation of that is that because is that the reason why people are swimming faster and better I don't know more more fun in racing yeah yeah uh- I, I'm 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 not sure that I would necessarily put it down purely to ISL. I think ISL ISL certainly had a very important role to play this season. Um, this mm. this when I say season, obviously I'm referring to some point last year because it's again a bit of a blur through mm. to the end of this well the Olympic Games, and and it's played a, a, a very significant role. Like last year, we're looking at the the calendar and there's the land lies, and it's like. Where are we going to race? What are we going to do? Mm. And then, you know, ISL is able to happen. And, you know, personally, it's short courses is, is not my jam. Um, mm. And, you know, ISL, six weeks away from home, you know, it was pretty difficult for me, um, uh, given especially the fact that we'd been effectively locked indoors for the past six months. Yeah. Um, but it was important because it provided, like, this amazing kind of mixing pot of all the world's best coming together after a really difficult you know year so far and all of a sudden we can race one another and yeah i think as a result when we look back on the olympic games there is going to be a part which like that isl even though there's the kind of the awkward disjoint between the two it's like it was really important and it was playing a significant role going back to 2018 mm. Maybe another time for maybe another do- topic of debate there, but um, mm. but I, I do think it is playing a, a an important role, particularly this season for sure. Yeah, I I, I I think personally for me, it, ISL it it more came to my mind this year. I, the first season, I I can't I don't have any memories of. I'm not even sure if I overly watched it while it was on, but this year I because it, you, it, I didn't. Yeah, because <laughs> because it's that first moment at which swimming was back in our lives. And I guess for all of you swimmers who've been locked away, let's say, in in training for God knows how long, it was a chance to kind of explode and give you that confidence boost heading into that, not final block of training, but into the big preparation now for Olympic. All you have to do is look at the members of your squad who've broke out because of ISL. Mm. And and, and that just shows the the importance it has now in that calendar. Yeah. And, and, you know, like I say, um, I think, you know, it works in different ways for different people. For me, it was just the ability to race. And mm. like, I'm talking very like basic, the ability to line up with someone else in a swimming pool and see who touches the wall first mm. and then turns and then touches the next wall first. Like, and, and like I say, short course ain't my thing, but just the ability to race was really important for me getting back into the flow of things and, and looking forward to this this season um, ahead um, and yeah like there were some people in my group who really thrived and really you know I'm going to be that person be like you know always kind of they always were capable of doing amazing things and ISL mm-hmm. was just that kind of like the starting point that the world could see them for, for, the, for the, the capabilities and the talents that they had so not summarising but if we're looking at that bigger picture we started at 
where mm -hmm. a lot of age group swimmers who voted on this poll didn't see it as a team sport, saw it as an individual. In this country, the only sort of team racing that we have is Arena League, which is kind of three mm -hmm. rounds right at the start of the year. Over in America, you you can if you watch any of the Instagram videos that they all put up, you can see the team environment that they've got is nuts it's incredible yeah and they've got yeah. ncaa's they are racing as a team a lot more than we have over here so do you think maybe i mean this is this is my personal opinion i think the open meat style that we race over here is pretty archaic i i'm not a fan i'd prefer to have all of if you're doing all of that winter racing as a team and you're having a leaderboard or a league table and you're constantly race, racing for cardiff or someone like that mm. then you start enhancing that team atmosphere at a club level which which is slightly harder to do than when you're at the elite where you are living and breathing it yeah i think i'm um and you know I'll, I'll be honest i'm this is a little bit unknown territory for me i never was say i never did arena league i never was oh, okay kind of um in and amongst all that stuff my 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 start of my swimming career as such was very very basic club swimming and mm. then eventually progressing through so when i you know moved to down to loughborough um but from you know what i know and kind of what you just said then like I, even though i have well zero experience and i have a limited understanding I, I i kind of agree there's there's a part of me which thinks that you know generally the start of the season is well as things get progressed it's the short course season as we would call it so september mm. through to december we do short course type stuff and then when it goes past the new year it's into long course and there is part of me that kind of feels like you know what that would be just kind of really fun and i think mm. it would be something that club um age group swimmers club swimmers could look at as fun because like i said earlier enjoyment is really important and if we could kind of build up a bit of more of a team element to those first few months, it would make quote unquote winter training, you know, a lot mm. more enjoyable. Mm. And I, I kind of agree with you doing open meets throughout the year. It's it, 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 it could be mixed up. That's for sure. Let's put it that way. I think I'm just, um, I'm in, in my head. I'm trying to think of different angles to present to young age group swimmers that it is a team sport. And, and maybe yeah. just telling them this important network that as a teenager, you know, you never listen to advice. You, your head's oh, on no, the sand. You're I just was, like, I don't need yeah. my coach. I can do it by myself. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that so, was me through and through. <laughs> so if you can present this team atmosphere in a more fun way, where, whether it is racing for a team rather than training for a team kind of thing, maybe, maybe that's yeah. a way to... I think so. Because, I mean, some of the, some of the people that did um, ISL in season one um, when we were going towards season two and they were kind of like trying to almost like explain what it was like. I think um, probably, you know, paraphrasing a quote here, but someone said um, it's like arena league, but just gone mad and like mm. blown completely out of like just yeah. massive scale, you know, DJ lights, all this sort of stuff. <laughs> and yeah. So if, if that's what ISL is like for someone who has had that experience and come through, take it back to the arena league absolutely that more of that would be great because mm. it, it the you know the performances are important but that element of team you know cohesion is mm. is is something that i think you know age group of people would really learn to appreciate and they would get to kind of hopefully hopefully uh, they would progress through to a senior level and maybe even senior international level and and get to a point where they actually that translates into an, an appreciation because that's, you know, that's one of my almost regrets of my career is I, I didn't almost fully, fully appreciate my quote unquote again team until I kind of really started to see the bigger picture and had that maturity to be like, wow, this is a really important group of people. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, if you get that through to age group swimmers through a, a, a ski, um, a, a project almost like that now that's a big project but that would be great that would really really be great well we did have the idea of doing like a buck style varsity <laughs> so we have like bath versus loughborough or edinburgh versus sterling bucks is, I'm just, I'm, bucks is great fun it's, it so, is yeah. amazing Ed, isn't it yeah anything I, like that 
would be it would be great fun. And I just I wonder really if think. if that sort of set up, you've had different divisions and stuff like that or whatever, um, would that help getting race experience for the younger swimmers and get the feeling of being part of a team more? Mm. Definitely, I think so. I, it, even I'm even I'm just you know I'm just kind of sitting here thinking, well, do you know what? Just forget about the actual performances and the times. Forget about yeah. all that. Just like the whole experience and the whole kind of like working together as a group definitely would be a lot of fun and yeah. really open people's eyes and um, give people that experience of what it's like to be part of that group um, mm. of, of athletes. And then, you know, as they progress, like I say, that staff element kind of comes in more and more, more than, you know, more than just say their coach or a team manager. Mm, yeah. I mean, Bucks was what got me back into swimming. That is so much fun. So much fun. Bucks, Bucks is a lot of fun. I am um, unfortunately, well, being Loughborough University, there's a, there's an element of seriousness to it, um, <laughs> but it, yeah. but it is still fun, um, and it's it's, it's 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 a good laugh to kind of um, do, and you know, particularly when you've got people who you maybe came up through the age group um, swimming with, and they've gone to a different mm. university, and you kind of get to meet up with them and, and see them again. Yeah, I, I I enjoy Bucks. I enjoyed, I should say, Bucks, and hopefully when it um, comes back. Um, I'll hopefully if they do guess, I'm, I'm not entirely sure. You know, I don't know how I'll be, what I'll be doing then, but yeah, I would, I would love to go back and do that again. Yeah. Well, we, we've covered loads on this this podcast. We covered the team. <laughs> I, I I think we we can't have you on the Propulsion Swim podcast without talking about Tokyo slightly. So okay. so what's your what's your personal aim for this Olympics? Ooh. Um, I I'm going to be very vague here and say I would like to um, swim fast and I would like to be very competitive. (laughs) Yeah, very, very, very. uh, I'd like to be, I would like to be really competitive um, amongst, um, you know, those top spots. I I really do think um, that's, that's what I'd like to do. I think I've, uh, you know, I've, I've been in a great position and very fortunate to have medals at internationals, um, a number mm-hmm. of internationals in the past couple of years um, in the before times. Um, and I, I, I kind of want to continue that trajectory. This, this, this pandemic year has been very difficult. Um, there's no denying that. Um, but I feel in an absolutely great place physically um, and mentally at the moment where it's kind of a very quiet confidence um, mm. to myself. And um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can do and also seeing how I can contribute uh, outside the individuals, but to the kind of the potential relays that, um, you know, we've got towards the back end of the week. Yeah. I, I mean, the stroke has got very interesting. Don't you think we've got, you've got, uh, obviously got Adam, you've got Kaminga, you've mm. got uh, Shimanovic. Now, Michael Andrew has now suddenly gone 58 one. It's a bit of a, it's a tough field now. I mean, you're doing pretty well to make the final, it seems, but uh, I've got pretty, <sighs> pretty high hopes for you actually. Yeah. I, I think you can go 58 low. I'm pretty sure. I was going to say, we'll, we'll be doing our preview podcast, which will go up when this is live on Thursday. So in less than a week's time. And I, I can categorically say your name will get mentioned in yeah. medal medal conversations purely because of like you said you've meddled at major meets before you've got that experience i think the worry i have with michael andrew is when we watched us trials the nerves got the better of him when it came to the final and he swam slower a lot slower so i, th- I think that's one thing that you have in your locker i'm not gonna get you to dig into it too much <laughs> um but from our personal previewing, that's kind of the angle that we're going to be looking at things from yeah. when, when we I get think, into it. Yeah, it's, tre- it's treading a fine line between confidence and, and arrogance, I suppose. Yeah. But um, th- there is, there is uh, something to be said in that, and, and, you know, this applies to everyone. So, so I'm, not, I'm not saying that I uh, am almighty at this, but there is something to be said for putting down the performance when it truly matters and yeah. mm. and these big events throw curveballs on a daily hourly mm. basis and it's it's it is managing those to get out the physical work that you've done uh, over the the number of years um mm. and it kind of almost gets to a point where actually the physical work is is the minority part of of the performance it's it's mm. it's a really unique um environment and it's it's a challenging one for everyone for sure so what we usually do to end these podcasts is some quick fire questions do you fill out for these james uh i will try to be as quick as possible 
I will keep my mouth <laughs> closed as much as possible, <laughs> opening very quickly and very close. Yeah. Um, so, what's your favorite event? I think I enjoy racing the hundred the most. Who is your swimming idol? Surely, I, I have to say Michael Phelps, given when I grew up and all that sort of stuff. Michael Phelps, um, fine. broadly speaking, uh, I think <laughs> GB will go Liam Tancock. Oh, nice. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Um, what's your proudest moment in swimming so far? Um, Commonwealth Games in 2018, um, and my mum being there to watch for the events. So, oh. yeah, being able to kind of do those events and share that with her, definitely probably my proudest moment. It's brilliant nice. holiday for her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <it was. laughs> um, What's the hardest set you've ever done? Um, oh, many, many a hard set. I think the one that kind of always springs to mind is 10 300s breaststroke. Uh, I just, yeah, I don't even know. Short course as well, so it's just major breath holes. But, um, yeah, I think that was, that was a pretty rough Saturday morning. That was a few oh. years ago as well. What was the Still aim scared. of that exactly? Is that you you're trying to hold pace you know, or it was it count? was a long time ago and I think I've I think it was a bit of both, but I, I've okay. blotted a lot of it out of my memory. Just, <laughs> I just remember <laughs> the struggle. <laughs> I wonder if Dave's listening to this podcast and thinks, Oh, we could do that. There's That's still time. Idea. No, yeah. that, that was before I moved in. That was before I moved in with Dave. And, uh, <laughs> I, I'm I'm hoping he doesn't get any ideas, but um yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Um, and if you were to go on a road trip, you've got three spaces in the car. You can take friends, family, or celebrities. Who would oh. you take? Um, well, I'm actually a big fan of road trips. Um, I've done uh, a very a great road trip um, all the way through Europe, down to, through Italy um, recently, actually, a couple of years ago. So I do love a good road trip. Um, I'm going to be harsh, though, and I'm going to boot out all my family and friends um, because <laughs> i'd kind of sometimes do road trips with them anyway um, i was gonna say it sounds like you've celeb- already got them if the celebrities are in the yeah. mix I'm, I'm gonna have yeah. to go with some celebrities so um i am going to go for uh, they, they have to be alive i'm guessing we're not doing like no living and dead. no you can bring them Anyone. back mm. oh we can bring them back yeah right okay i think this is meant to be quick fire and this is suddenly not very quick I'm going to have to go for my number one pick is uh, Barack Obama. I um, recently read his book, his new book, and it's absolutely fascinating. Um, And yeah, I definitely think I could kill a lot of time talking (laughs) to him. Um, So that'll be number one uh, in the front seat, definitely. I think in the other two seats, oh God, I think about bringing back people from the, from the grave now. Um, I would have to go for it's like curveball, Alan Turing. I'm very into my technology, oh, okay. yeah, 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 and I'm I'm very fascinated by someone who is, you know, arguably the father of modern computing. Um, mm. So yeah, I think I'd have to go with Alan Turing on that one, and then uh, oh god, probably. Uh, I'm from the last seat. I've got a couple of people in mind and I don't know who to go for. <laughs> Do you know what? Right. You know, in car journeys, you've got to have some sing-alongs. Mm. I think I would have to go for someone who can really sing. And I think, uh, I don't know. I feel like I need to balance up the genders as well. <laughs> Let's go for... <laughs> It's a lot of thought going going into this. There is. (laughs) Sounds Uh, like it's actually going to happen. (laughs) You know what? Just to balance up the genders a bit, I'll have Adele because I watched her carpool karaoke a long time ago. Not only can she sing, but she sounds like an absolute barrel laugh. So uh, yeah, yeah, we'll we'll go with those. Two people that I'm absolutely fascinated just to talk and chew their ears off like I have done you two for the past hour (laughs) or so. Um, But then uh, I've got to get a singer in there. So we'll go Adele. Brilliant. Not that I well, think Adele is my favorite musician, but you know, I'm just saying, got to get someone in there. <laughs> good, good crack. That's that's what's important. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, James. Well, honestly, it's been amazing having you on. I'm glad you reached out to us to speak about this topic. It's something that both Dan and myself feel passionate about, and obviously, from listening to this podcast, I hope everyone has gathered that you are as well, and that yeah. categorically, swimming is a team sport. Mm. Yeah. I think uh, there is there is no doubt in that about that in my mind. Mm. I just I just hope between the three of us we've explained it well enough to 
well, everyone. I was going to say age groupers, but hopefully everyone of all yeah. ages. But uh, understand. Yeah, understand. My fear is that we've my fear is that we've left more uh, left them with more questions than answers. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, hopefully, if, <laughs> if needs be, we'll do a follow up podcast. We'll sort it out later on down the line. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll uh, make it slightly more quick fire next time as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, James, best of luck for Tokyo. I know when this goes live, you'll be on your flight. Taper will have mm. started. Um, yeah. So, yeah, best of luck in that 100 and 200 and the medley relay as well. I'm sure you'll have a part to play in that one. We cannot wait to see how you go. Um, and, yeah, so, uh, thank you so much for reaching out to us to talk about this topic. It is truly important that people understand it. Mm. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's thanks very, very much for having me. And um, I've, I've certainly enjoyed it. It's actually been a very nice break from my... Uh, my packing i've uh started doing that so <laughs> speaking of the flight so um yeah i'll be coming off the phone now and uh, heading upstairs and continuing the pack so um yeah but no thanks very much for having me and um hopefully there's some insight ho- helpful insight out there for the uh for the listeners and uh hopefully i don't drone on too much i always always get carried no, away sometimes not. when i get passionate <laughs> about things no well thank you very much and good luck in tokyo and uh really looking forward to your 100 breast shock i always consider you as a big time swimmer you know you always turn up to the big events so i'm really high hopes for mm. you so yeah really good luck to you appreciate that thanks very much so that just about rounds up this week's episode of the propulsion swimming podcast like i said the preview for tokyo is coming next week stay tuned me and dan cannot wait to preview basically every event every day every british swimmer who's going they will get coverage um But until then, I think all that's left for me to say is please subscribe to the Propulsion Swimming channel on YouTube, Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we will see you in the next one. Thank you very much for listening, everyone. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. You've been listening to the Propulsion Swimming Podcast with Scott and Dan. We want to thank you for joining us and invite you to subscribe to the show as well as checking out the Propulsion Swimming YouTube channel for weekly tutorials and videos to get your swimming fix. We will be back next week. Until then, we'll catch you on the next one.